everyone, welcome to Kidneys in the Kitchen. I'm Megan Craig, Director of Programs for the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois. And I'm joined today by Melanie, a dietitian. Melanie, Melanie, will you introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, my name is Melanie Betts. I am a dietitian in the section of nephrology at the University of Chicago. So I work with um, patients with all sorts of kidney diseases, including chronic kidney disease, before they go on dialysis or have a transplant. Okay, wonderful. And um, for those of you who are uh, new to the program, Kidneys in the Kitchen is new to us as well. Uh, it's a new version of a program that we were doing before. Um, so this is our first episode working with Can TV um, to uh, give you all some diet information. So just as a reminder, everything we say today is general for kidney patients, um, but please, if you have any specific questions to your situation, do check with your own dietitian. Always. Always. Yes. <laughs> All right, wonderful. So um, we're going to be talking today about a winter-friendly topic, which is great because as we're filming this, the weather outside is not delightful. Yeah, pretty cold. Yeah. Lots and of snow. Cold and snowy. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to be talking about soups and and nice warm foods for this cold weather. Yes. Who doesn't love a big bowl of soup and, exactly. when it's cold outside and snowy? Exactly. Yeah. So. So soup can can be a very healthy food. Um, the first thing that often comes to mind when when we think of soup and and kidney disease is that it has a lot of sodium, and we all know that salt is not the best for our not kidneys. Not ideal. Yeah. Right. Right. So if you buy soup at a restaurant or if you get it in a can um, or if you get it at a cafe or anything like that, there can be up to around 900 milligrams of sodium just in a small cup. Yikes. So okay. that's almost half of the sodium you should have on an entire your day. Yes, it's a lot. Yes, yes. Um, the good news is that you can make it at home and you can really make it a very low sodium and really a very healthy meal for yourself. Awesome and pretty low cost as well, yes, right? Yes, definitely, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. So um, in, in terms of sodium, um, there are a couple things you need to be really careful about um, to make sure that your soup that you make at home isn't just as high sodium as what you might get in a restaurant. Of course. So the first thing um, that you should think of is what type of broth you're using. Okay. So we have two different chicken broths here. Um, you can use chicken broth, beef broth, vegetable broth, whatever you prefer. Um, the only thing that I would recommend is being really careful about how much salt is in the broth that you're choosing. So if we look at this this chicken broth, and we can zoom in here. Mm, this way? This way. Okay. Yeah. So, so this chicken broth, um, for only one cup of broth right here, has 430 milligrams of sodium, which is quite a bit, especially if you think you might actually drink more than one Right, cup of, of it, course, right, yeah. Right? So then if we look at this broth instead, which is low-sodium broth, this one only has 140 milligrams of sodium. Oh, way, way less. Yeah, okay. much, much less. Um, so this would be a much, much better option instead of this regular chicken broth. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. And um, when I was uh, in the grocery store grabbing some items yes, for today, yeah. I did notice also that there's a um, no-sodium version. Oh, yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on a no-sodium broth? I think if you, you give it a try, and if you like it, and you can tolerate it, then that would be even better. There would be almost no sodium in that chicken broth okay. compared to the low sodium version. Um, but I would, maybe if you're used to using regular chicken broth, might recommend going down to just low sodium first sure. and kind of work your way down to that low sodium because it will taste very, very different. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you don't want to make up for it by dumping a bunch of salt. Exactly. Into and it. then you're probably going to have more salt than if you just use the regular stuff. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, the other option is if you do have a lot of time and enjoy being in the kitchen is you can make homemade broth as well. Oh, okay. Um, so if you roast a chicken, you have those bones that are left over that you would normally just throw away. If you just throw it in a big pot with some water, add some onions, some carrots, some celery, let that boil simmer for just an hour, that you can make your own chicken broth and that will be no sodium. And that really tastes a lot better than this stuff anyway. Yeah, that sounds better, mm -hmm. but yeah. also like more work. <laughs> much so. more time. Much more time. I, I use this stuff but if you have the time the homemade chicken broth is an option sure and when it comes to like a roasted chicken or things like that it's mm -hmm. the skin that 
has most of the sodium in it, right? Um, generally, yes, if, okay. especially if you buy a rotisserie chicken um, at, at the grocery store, that's going to have a lot of salt added, um, probably also salt injected into it to make it nice and juicy. Oh, um, okay. So if you just make a chicken at home, you can go ahead and, and enjoy some of the skin um, and even throw it in the broth, and that's going to give it even more flavor, especially if you don't add any salt. Some of that fat will add a little flavor. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Yes. Um, and because we're talking about, obviously, soup is broth-based, um, does that count toward, if you're on a, a restricted fluid yes, diet? Yes, that's a great question. Does that count yes. toward your fluids? Yes, we know our patients on dialysis often have to restrict their fluid. Um, and yes, it does count. Okay. Um, so we'll talk um, later today about some ways to really make that soup worth it, and you can really make that soup a whole meal. Um, so if you add lots of things to it, you can probably get away with eating a little bit less broth. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, so the next thing that might you might be thinking of is, all right, so we take away all this salt, how is the soup going to taste good, right? Yeah. So um, the, the first thing, whenever you start any soup, um, pretty much you probably want to start with sautéing some onions and garlic and what other, any other vegetables that you are going to put in the soup. Um, sautéing those vegetables first is really going to add a whole lot more flavor than if you just throw them in the broth and boil them later. And I know sometimes um, we talk about uh, certain ways to cook vegetables to make them more kidney friendly. Sauteing just sort of the normal way is fine yeah, for this ab purpose. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you can saute in a little bit of heart healthy um, olive oil or canola oil would be a good option as well. Okay. Um, as long as you are not frying vegetables, which you probably wouldn't do for soup anyway, um, that that's a perfectly fine way to cook them. Okay, awesome. And we also know uh, that um, if those of you who have watched before, we've talked about um, olive oil being pretty high in fat, so we want to use a little, not a ton of yes, it, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Yep, just, just enough to coat the bottom of your pan. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so after you saute your, your onions and your garlic, um, another good way to add flavor is using as many herbs and spices as you want and that you like. Um, any sort of just herb and spice is going to be basically no sodium at all. So you can experiment with different fun herbs and spices to, to add flavor to your soup. Some examples might be cumin. This, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> cumin, cumin is one of my favorites, um, or even oregano too. That's another great one. Okay, wonderful. What are some of your favorites, Megan? Um, so I love um, rosemary. It's oh, my that's very a good one favorite. Too. Mm -hmm. I especially love it in anything baked. Mm -hmm. I think it's just delightful in yeah. like crackers and things yeah, like that. Absolutely. So and of course, salt free. So oh, yes, yes, absolutely. And dill wheat is one of my favorites oh, as well. Dill, so mm -hmm. good. And it goes with pretty much anything I say. Yes, that's. <laughs> I completely agree on yes. on salmon or whatever. Right. Yeah, yes. for sure. All right. Um, my last tip to help really boost the flavor of your soup without adding a ton of salt is at the very, very end, add some fresh lemon or lime juice. Um, just squeeze half a lemon in there, one lime. Um, it works great in pretty much any soup that you might make, in chicken soup or in lentil soup or any, any vegetable soup, and it just adds sort of a brightness and a, a great pop of flavor right at the end. Sure, and you know, like we mentioned before, I, I think this onion at the, gr or this um, lemon at the grocery store was maybe 90 cents right. or something, right. so it's a very low cost way to add mm -hmm. some real flavor. Right. And then you can, um, if you're not on fluid restriction, you can add the rest of the lemon to your water. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And lemon is a great way to add flavor to things besides soup too. If you bake some chicken or if you have some pasta or something like that, it's, you, it goes on anything. Sure, really. yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, all right. Um, the next thing about soup that I really like is that it's a great way to get in tons of vegetables. Um, any, anyone with kidney disease can eat lots of vegetables as long as you're choosing the right ones. Of course, if you have to limit potassium, then you want to make sure you're choosing the lower potassium vegetables. But even still, you, you still can eat a lot of vegetables. It's a great way to get in, get in those servings. Are there any particularly high potassium vegetables people should be avoiding? Yes. So if you are on dialysis or have stage 4 or 5 kidney disease or your doctor has told you you need to limit potassium, being really careful to avoid a lot of potatoes, um, tomatoes. The, uh, some other big ones that especially come up a lot in the winter months are those winter squashes. So things ah, like okay. butternut squash, acorn squash those things can, can really add a lot of potassium to your diet, so okay. I would be careful with those. Good to know. 
And yes. potatoes, especially when it comes to soup, I feel like that's probably really common. Yes, definitely, definitely. And any sort of tomato broth can be. Um, oh, of course, yes. yeah, like a vegetable broth. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so, but the safer ones that all of us can enjoy um, are things like carrots. That's a really great one. Um, so, any any sort of fresh or frozen vegetable is going to be a great option. I love carrots because they're really cheap. <laughs> for, 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 uh, yeah, so um, I, uh, when I was grocery shopping, I went with the whole carrots. Is there any reason not to go with those little mini pre-done carrots? No. Or it's the same kind no, of thing, either right? way, either one is, is really fine. Um, the little ones, you don't have to peel, so that saves you some time. Yeah, that, yeah, that is nice. Yeah, um, one really good thing about um, frozen vegetables is that they tend to be pretty cheap, usually about a dollar a bag. Um, and you can you can throw these right, right. We're trying to work with our cameras here. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> you can throw these right into into your soup. So this frozen vegetables generally require no prep at, at all. And uh, just to be sure, um, frozen vegetables versus fresh vegetables versus canned vegetables, mm -hmm. anything people should be watching out for yeah. when they're getting frozen vegetables? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, generally, frozen and fresh are the way to go. Either one of those are fine. If you do do frozen vegetables, be really careful that you're not getting one that has a cheese sauce or some sort of cream sauce or something like that on sure, it. Sure, those like buttery, delicious ones. Yes, yeah. exactly. All right. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, but um, it, but always, always, no matter what you're buying, just look at the Nutrition Facts label for, for frozen vegetables and make sure that it is... It is low. Just the vegetable. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, and and the key really is to avoid canned vegetables because those always have a lot of salt added to them. Okay. Good to know. So mm -hmm. canned vegetables, not the same as fresh, but frozen generally the same as yes. fresh. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Um, all right. So the, the next thing that I like to think about when I'm making a soup is that I really do love to make soup sort of a whole meal. Um, you don't need to have soup just as an appetizer. I think it can be a whole meal. So if you're doing that, just um, trying to add some sort of carbohydrate to it can make it more filling. Okay, sure. If you are not on dialysis or stage 4 or 5 um, kidney disease, then adding a whole grain pasta or brown rice or quinoa or um, any, any of those sort of whole grains can be a great way to add lots of flavor um, and really help, f help that soup be much more hearty. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but then if you are stage four, five, or on dialysis, it's whites, not whole grains, right? Absolutely, yes. If you need to restrict potassium and phosphorus, then doing a white rice or white pasta is a better way to go. But you can still add, add those foods to the soup, um, and it still is a very healthy option for you and can help fill you up. Wonderful. Yes. Um, the other thing that I like to make sure that is in my soup, especially if it's my entire meal, is that we have some good protein in there. Um, so, of course, we think protein, you think meat and chicken. Um, you can add those things. If you um, are stage four or five, I would say trying to add a small amount to your soup is the best way to go. And it's really a great way to make that little bit of protein feel like it's more. You know, you can add one chicken breast for a whole pot of soup sure. as opposed to just eating that one chicken breast for one meal. That makes sense. Yep. Yes. Um, so, uh, if you are on dialysis, though, you probably need to eat a lot of protein, so soup, you can add as much, you know, as much chicken or, or beef th as you'd like to your soup. Sure, um, and I know one thing that we've been promoting at the foundation lately is a meatless Mondays yes. as, a, as an earlier CKD and just kidney healthy general yeah, way to eat. Um, so some non-meat proteins, right, mm -hmm. uh, would be beans? Absolutely. And soup is a great way to get in those non-meat proteins. Um, so beans, uh, you can get dried ones, of course, but those are pretty time-consuming, similar to that homemade chicken broth. So if you get low-sodium beans, Ban over. There we go. Yes, um, you can um, you can find them low sodium, and that's that's a really great option. I would just recommend rinsing them before you use them, and that will get of some of the salt that even still is in the reduced sodium. Sure. Options. Okay, that makes sense. So yes. just put them in a strainer. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Awesome. 
Absolutely. Um, other good sources of vegetarian proteins are lentils. You see that used a lot in soups. Um, some soups I've seen even have some um, nuts in them, oh. such as like almonds or, or pecans or something like that. So you could even try those, experiment a little bit with that. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yes. Um, the last thing I want to mention about soup is that it's really a great way to save um, save a lot of money. So those, I, I mentioned that you can make your meat go much farther and get away with eating a lot less that is, and then if you just had a piece of chicken for dinner. Um, and so that really saves you a lot, of, a lot of money because that tends to be the most expensive ingredient that we are buying. So that's a great thing about soup. Um, and you can also cook a ton of it at once. This is my favorite favorite trick with soup. Yeah, that's right. We brought we brought our plastic container, so in case we turn all this into a soup later today, <laughs> um, we'll be able to pop that in the freezer, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's what slow cookers are great for. Um, you can you know have that going all day. It can be ready when you come home from work, and you can um, you know eat just that little bit and then freeze the rest of it, and you can enjoy that months later. Sure. Yeah. Um, it looks like we have a caller with a question, okay. so we'll take that. Hi, um, I'm on dialysis and I still like to go out for lunch sometimes with my coworkers. What kind of soup could I order that isn't going to like ruin my dialysis? Mm -hmm. That's a really great question. Um, and really, that's, it's really hard to give a overarching, you know, eat this soup, not that soup, because it really depends on where you find yourself for lunch. So what I would recommend to anyone doing is to go online and check out that restaurant's nutrition information before you go. Or a lot of restaurants have it just available for you as a card that they can give you at the when you um, order your food and just go down that sodium column and try to find the, salt, the, the soup that has the lowest amount of salt. Cool. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for calling. Um, so uh, when we're talking about um, saving time, saving money, we've got our we've got our broth and I know these are in boxes, but it comes in cans, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And that's the same product. Yes, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Absolutely. Um, we've got our pre-made pasta. If you really want to spend time in the kitchen, feel free to make you your could. own homemade pasta. That would be a whole pasta. Sunday afternoon. <laughs> I, I don't, it's probably not worth it. I tried to make gnocchi once and I was like, no, yeah, I'm just going to buy it. I that. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's um, not easy. Yes, but, yeah. Um, yeah, buying pasta is completely fine. Buying the whole grain or white, depending on what you need to be doing. And that's a great cheap option for, for people. Sure, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Cool, wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, we know that people on any kind of specialized diet are always looking to save money on how to eat healthily on that diet because, you know, unlike most people, you can't just pop by McDonald's and right. you know, or, or any fast food restaurant and yes. get um, get a, a quick meal. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's obviously the sodium there is going to be too high. So right. Um, well, one thing I wanted to mention is we do have a free cookbook for dialysis patients. So if you're on dialysis or looking or in stages four and five and looking for um, some healthy eating options, I'm just going to go to our website here. Um, you can go to our website under patients and families. We have a diet and nutrition section. Um, and uh, if you scroll a bit, if you go under apps and resources, um, we do have some food coach resources, so you can put in um, your specific requirements um, and be able to look at some possible recipe options. Um, you can also order our, cook our free cookbook um, just by clicking on our website, and we'll be happy to send that out to you at absolutely no cost. Um, it's just a, a great uh, we hope, resource for um, kidney patients. Um, this section, by the way, is also where you'll be able to find um, the, this collection of videos. So past videos, um, this one, and future videos will all be collected here. Um, and you're able to find uh, anything you need to know about our other programming this way as well under the events tab. All of our patient programs are free. Um, so we'd love to see you at those as well. Um, Otherwise, um, I think uh, oh, we wanted to um, give you some contact information as well. So I'll just zoom in on that. 
Uh, if you need anything from the National Kidney Foundation of Illinois, you can visit us, like I said, our website, www.nkfi.org. Um, we're also available at kidney at nkfi.org if you have any specific questions, or you can call us at 800-9-KIDNEY. Otherwise, I want to thank you so much for being with us thank today you, for our fun. inaugural uh, Can TV Kidneys in the Kitchen. So we hope you all enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the foundation. We can pass those on to Melanie Absolutely. or other dietitians, um, and we'll be happy to find you the answers, uh, even if we don't have them right at our fingertips at the foundation. So we look forward to seeing you at our next kidneys in the kitchen. Um, and otherwise, thank you. Thank you.